Hello, welcome to Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My website is jasonnewland.com This is going to be a relaxation session and I'm basically just going to talk to you. I do advise that you get yourself comfortable as much as possible, sitting in a chair that supports your body or lying down on a flat surface such as your bed. I realise that you may be listening to this when you're not at home, maybe sitting on a plane, a long, you know, long haul plane or something, trying to get yourself some sleep. Hopefully you're not flying the plane, but you know, it's so, you might have restricted movement. So in that situation, uh, I'd recommend maybe making sure that you have loose clothing on. If you have a tight belt, maybe undo the belt. Do people still wear belts these days? I don't know. If you're wearing shoes, maybe take them off. Unless, of course, you have really smelly feet. It's not really fair on the other passengers. Unless the passenger next to you is snoring, then that kind of seems fair to get your smelly feet out. Wearing something loose on top, you know, like a very loose jumper or a t-shirt or if you're in bed maybe nothing if you if the if it's warm enough and another thing environmentally environmentally if i can say the word correctly don't have the room too warm if at all possible because we tend to heat up when we're asleep. Of course, you need to have heat. Don't want it to be cold. Just a nice temperature where you can just I guess not even think about it. Ideally, you'd be lying there or sitting down, not thinking about whether your clothes are restrictive or whether it's too hot or too cold. But that stuff's just gone. It doesn't even... Perhaps it didn't before, but because I've been mentioning it, now you're thinking about it. Oh, it's, it's, it's a little bit warm. Sorry about that. But then it doesn't matter because you can just breathe those thoughts away. And 
and there is something quite useful to to be able to relax even in environments where perhaps at that moment you're not feeling particularly comfortable physically yet you can Close your eyes and it's almost like you move away from that place in your mind so that you may be physically there. But emotionally and mentally and spiritually, you're just removed. You're somewhere else, maybe watching, maybe ignoring. Doing this can be useful sometimes, you know, in medical exams. I don't mean to become a doctor, I mean, you know, being, having a medical procedure or dentist procedure, something like that, sometimes it can be useful to just remove yourself, almost getting out of your own way, giving room and space and time to the other person to do what they need to do in order to help you. But you can, in your mind, be somewhere else, relaxed and calm and peaceful. And the more you listen to my voice, the more often you spend time with me, with these recordings. Things like that become almost automatic. So even if you hadn't previously even considered that you could sit in a dentist's chair or have a physical uh, medical procedure without feeling anything but comfort and calmness and feeling fully relaxed. That ability is there for you to utilize whenever necessary. And the reason it is there is because that part of your brain that allows you to just remove yourself from a situation that may normally be physically uncomfortable or unpleasant. But now, because that part of your brain has been activated and exercised regularly by listening to my voice, the part of your brain that allows you to step back, that allows you to be able to feel calm, feel comfortable. When you're in a situation 
like being at the dentist or having a physical medical procedure. And as we all know, a lot of the reasons that maybe stress and tension that used to be there when we thought about those things is a lot due to society and the negativity that comes from pretty much everyone since we were born when it comes to things like dentists. This, you know, it's never had a It's not something you generally get a lot of excitement about. I don't think there's ever been a, a soap opera about dentists or a reality program about dentists. Who would watch it? Maybe they should, whoever they are. I wouldn't watch it. You know, dental stuff has always seemed to have an, a bit of a negative connotation when actually going to the dentist really is useful. It's better than the alternative. It's better than not going. You know, if you can go and do checkups and all that stuff, but I'm not here to tell you what to do with your mouth because that would be weird. Your mouth, your decision. I think that Martin Luther King said that, didn't he? I don't know. So, being able to think about going to the dentist and to feel relaxed which is probably the opposite to how you've felt in the past maybe to almost not care you know you know someone's to come up to you and say there's a pebble on the beach just been to the beach and there's a pebble on the beach that has got like a a Z on it, you know, almost like a Zorro sign on the pebble. It's a little pebble, but it's it's got this like little Z um, Zorro sign. And I found it, and I, I thought I thought I didn't. Um, I took a picture on my phone. And I didn't bring the didn't bring the pebble with me. I left it on the beach because that's the right thing to do environmentally. So, but I've got a picture of it. Would you like to see the picture of the pebble with the Zorro sign that's been created by nature? Or perhaps just written on by a child with a permanent marker? Chances are, if you put your hand on your heart, you can't literally do that, can you? I mean, without, you know, but you know what I mean. Put hand on heart. Would you really be excited to see that? And maybe some people would, and that's fine. And uh, maybe I've not got, I've not gone mundane enough. Uh, as an example, 
of something that you wouldn't be interested in. Okay, let me think of another example. If I was to say to you, go to my website and there is a picture on there of me holding a tennis ball. How crazy excited would you get? How interested would you be? I mean, you'd be like, oh, quickly, turn this recording off. Let's go to the website. He's holding a tennis ball. Probably not. It's not very interesting. It's just, he's holding a tennis ball. So what? It's not going to change your life. It's not even worthy of creating any type of emotion at all. And to have that frame of mind when it comes to going to the dentist, that real like, I don't care. You know, stick it on the list of things to do for that day. Not even a list of things to do, a list of things that, you know, you generally stick it with the things that you normally do do. I have to have something to eat, go to the dentist, do a poo. Should I do a poo before I go to the dentist or should I do a poo afterwards, treat myself? For being such a good dental patient. So to kind of put it into that part of your mind where it's almost just so uninteresting. Like, to the point of tedious. Ah, oh, I can't go to the dentist. Not, oh, I've got to go to the dentist. Oh, not that kind of thing. But just, ah, oh, I've got to go to the dentist. How boring. You know, that time, that travelling sitting in the waiting room, being seen and then having treatment and then coming home, that's time you'll never get back. Now that might sound negative, and I guess in a way it is quite a negative stance in the sense of I'm never going to get that time back, me, 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 me. But it's almost, it's in a completely different part of your mind. And it can be like a comedy, I'll never get that time back. It doesn't have to be aggressive or uh, whatever uh, uh, is. So it goes in a different part of your mind which means the connections between the thoughts and your emotions are no longer there. Or if they are there, they're, they're the same connections as the other things in that part of your mind. It's kind of joined together with those things. Like... Oh, I've got to go shopping. I've got to clean the bath. I've got to go to the dentist. Yeah. So it's a chore. But that's all it is. I mean, you, you could go in a different direction and want to be really excited. 
but I think if you turned up, I think if you were travelling, you know, on a bus and all excited, and someone said, "What's? Why are you so excited?" I said, "Oh, I'm going to the dentist. I'm having a tooth out. I'm going to the dentist." And there's chances you might get sectioned. You don't want to end up in a mental hospital. So, you know, that could be the downside of getting excited about going to the dentist. Although, saying that, saying that, I remember, this is in the 90s. It might not have been. It was a long time ago anyway. And there was this little kid. It's on the news. And severely physically disabled like pretty much uh, hadn't could hardly leave the house um, due to all different things you know spent most of his most of his childhood in hospital um, really positive kid really optimistic happy which I just, I just felt embarrassed for myself. I felt ashamed. I f honestly, like, here's me worrying about this thing and this little kid is being positive and, you know. But then we can't really compare each other. Can't compare ourselves because, you know, he doesn't have to go to work, does he? But, <laughs> joking, but, you know, he was such an inspiration. And they said to him, oh, you seem like a really, I think his mum said, oh, he's really happy today. He's really excited. And I think he was about eight years old, maybe nine, ten, something like that. Why are you excited? Said the reporter to this child. I'm excited because I'm going to the dentist. Now the, the reporter laughed um, because, you know, to the average person, being excited to go to a dentist is you know, a bit silly, a bit unrealistic, a bit, hmm, why, 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 why? But the reporter said, why? Why are you excited to go to the dentist? And the little kid said, I've never been before. And I realised some people might say, yeah, you're excited now. You won't be excited to go back. <laughs> With a negativity. But he was excited to do anything new. He was excited and just to be alive which is something I think everybody could learn from to be appreciative I'm not preaching, trust me I'm talking more for myself here if I could be more like that uh, my life would transform so I like to remember that story. I just pass it on, just something that it stayed with me. Stayed with me. It's one of those things that I'll probably always remember. Kid's probably about 35 years old now. Wow. I can imagine. <laughs> He's at home now going, I hate dentists, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to a dentist. But one of the good things about being able to relax and let go is one of the things is to not take it all too seriously. To be able to let go of 
almost let go of that self-importance that we all can have sometimes. So when I talk about stuff, so I'll oh, let go of this and and I, maybe I'll talk about a, uh, a human quality that isn't always necessarily useful. I'm including myself in this. You know, I'm, I do not in any way think that I am better than anyone else or that I have, you know, personality traits that are superior. I really do not. I have a personality disorder and bipolar. So, you know, my, my, <laughs> my personality changes depending on the situation. But there's a stability of repetition. There's the ability that I've learnt to relax. I've learnt to be able to sit quietly, ideally quietly, and if I can't find a quiet place, I will put my noise cancelling headphones on and I will just close my eyes and I will just wait while those feelings I tell you what it's almost like a bath of dirty water and I just watch the water slowly sink as that dirt which is the probably sometimes confusion and maybe anger and frustration and just bitterness or whatever else is going on in my mind at that time it just starts to reduce and starts to flow down the plug hole the bath plug hole and that dirty water drains away. And as it happens, as you actually view this in your mind, or you don't even have to imagine it, it's just feel it. Just feel it. And as it drains away, so does the tension. to the point of not really caring about anything at all. And you can do that in the waiting room of the dentist. You could just sit there and think, I don't care. I really, really don't care. And it's, it's kind of a strange place to be in some ways, but it's very freeing. Now, you can't go through life like that because our decisions would be awful. You know, we, it's, you know, we, need, to be, we need to care about things generally, but there's times when it's good to let go of any caring so no matter what's going on in your life even if you've got relatives in the hospital you've got a new baby on the way whatever in that moment you don't care about any of that you just let it all go it's released just for that period of time. And connected to that is any concerns you may have towards, you know, stepping into the dentist's room. And there's the old saying, isn't it? Remember, everybody has to go to the toilet. No one's superior to anybody else. 
you see someone and they're acting like the the bee's knees, as we say in this country, someone that's so perfect looking and all that. Remember, they've probably got a dirty bum. So it doesn't matter, you know. They might not have a dirty bum, but if you imagine they do have a dirty bum, that they didn't wipe or they ran out of toilet paper while they were out, you know, when they was in the public toilets and they just had to kind of carry on regardless. It makes it a bit funnier. Some may say that's a bit crude. Well, you're probably the wrong audience for me. <laughs> if you, <laughs> that's what I do, baby. Not taking things too seriously. Take the serious things serious, and everything else. <laughs> that's me doing a raspberry. Or a big fart. Let it all fart away. And you might think, oh, this is a weird recording. What the hell have I just listened to? This is like really strange. And you might wonder, like, how, how? How is this going to help me to deal with going to a dentist? Ah, ah, that's the thing. It's a mysterious process. Because you may find that you feel differently. You may even find that you'll, when this recording's finished, maybe even now, you might try to think about going to the dentist and try to get back those feelings that you used to have. But for some reason, you're unable to do that. I remember I used to do chronic pain relief I used to offer free pain relief service in my town years ago. And I'd go around to people's houses and eventually I had an office where um, I'd see people. And every time they'd always try, at the end of the recording, so they might come in with fibromyalgia, they might come in with uh, you know back pain, whatever. They'd always try, after the recording's finished, to feel the pain again. It's the very first thing they would always try and do. Now, I do understand it's kind of like, test it. But that's the first thing they wanted to do. Didn't, they didn't want to see if it was relaxed or if it was feeling good, they wanted to see if they could get that pain back. Which says a little bit about the human mind. But unfortunately, because... It's a little bit like... If you jump into the swimming pool, and you get out of the swimming pool, and especially if you've got your clothes on, and you jump into the shallow end of the swimming pool, you get out. You jump in, you know, foot first, obviously. You get out. Your clothes are wet. So kind of... Some of you are probably thinking, yeah, that's the most boring pointless story is that some kind of analogy you jump into okay you cover yourself in water and you're wet yeah i mean what do you think we are three years old you're trying to teach us a life lesson here no i'm not but the fact is once you do something like that it is very similar almost 
like an analogy, very similar to when you listen to me. Something changes. You may not understand why it changes how you think and feel. Something shifts. Just a very tiny movement in your brain maybe or just a shift in your thinking, in your mind. And you go from being fully clothed with dry clothes on to be soaking wet. Now, you know, this is on a nice warm day, so it's not uncomfortable. But it's a change. And you can stand at the side of the pool. Once you get out, you can sit in a deck chair. And you can close your eyes and say to yourself, I'm dry, I'm dry, I'm dry ain't going to make no difference because your clothes are soaking wet. Of course you can take your clothes off and get changed and you can dry the clothes off. But it doesn't change the fact that they're soaking wet in that moment. And when you think about that swimming pool, what are you going to think about? You're going to think about how you jumped in or maybe slipped or pushed, I don't know, in the shallow end. When you think about that holiday, maybe if you was on holiday, that might be the the main thing you remember from that holiday. Sometimes we get an idea in our minds that we almost can't let go of. Feeling comfortable and relaxed. That the dentists don't no longer bother you. Don't care about the dentist anymore. You know, just sometimes an idea sticks. It's like, you know. Just sticks and it stays. Very unlike a helicopter in the sky that just flies past when I'm making a recording. Thank you, Mr. Helicopter Driver, Pilot, or Mrs. So how you feel changes. And it might be weird. Because, I don't know, if I was a, if I was a bit more showy, like, hey, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this now. You know, maybe that would be more entertaining and more show busy and perhaps if I did a couple of magic tricks although I'm guessing they wouldn't be totally appreciated by listening to an audio and you know I could be the best close-up magician in the world but would you enjoy it if you're just listening to me do it I don't know I thought about doing ventriloquism but then I realised that uh, I don't want to. A lot of soul searching for that one. Do I want to become a ventriloquist? No. Oh, okay. What about a plumber? No. What about making weird recordings for people to listen to? Okay then. So, it's quite easy for our minds to change suddenly. 
for our opinions to change. If you, if you think about it, if there's someone that you know, or maybe you don't know them very well, but you've kind of had the impression that they're a bit of a knob, you know, a bit of a unpleasant character, someone that you just, you may, maybe you've seen them from outside and you've maybe, you heard some stuff they say, maybe a bit like me really, they say the wrong things, inappropriate or whatever, and you think, mm, knobhead, knobhead, knob alert, and that's your opinion on that person, and you think, well, there's nothing in the world that could happen that would change that. And then, you know, for whatever reason, you go into a, a hospital or a children's hospital. It's an example. You go into a children's hospital because maybe you, you're doing a job there or you have to go there for something delivering. And you see this person entertaining the children, making the children laugh. Instantly, your opinion of them will change. Seeing this person, you know, bringing some happiness to a, a child that is very unwell. Instantly, your feelings towards that person would change instantly in a much stronger way than it was before just in the same way as you know some people might listen to me for the first time and think this bloke's drunk. What's he going on about? What on earth is he talking about? This is supposed to be about dentists. Well, he's now talking about people dressing up as clowns. I, I haven't, but that's, that is coming up soon. That is the next topic. Um, but then... You know, once the recording's over, and that was a weird noise there. Huh? Once the recording's over, and you start to think about the dentist, and you realise that you feel differently now regardless of what's happened in the past, you feel different and you don't know why you feel different. And chances are you're not going to attribute, attribute, I can't say the word, attribute, attribute your feeling different to listening to this, which is unusual considering this is what this recording is. You might just think, oh, it's just happened naturally. Which it has by listening to this recording. I remember I did some pain relief with my nan back in I don't know, 2004, blimey, 19 years ago. And she sat there, she had um, basically her bones were crumbling so she had shoulder pain so we sat there for about half an hour I talked to her she had her eyes closed and well for the first 10 minutes she kept talking back to me and answering me it's like no this isn't a conversation just <laughs> just shut up let me talk at you 
so eventually she she just kept quiet and at the end of it of course like trying to get the pain back like most people do it's like oh it's relaxed it's it's just feels like the other shoulder really have you swapped them over <laughs> but it's just like have you it just feels oh and then she said oh, i must because the sun the sun must have been shining on my shoulder so it's heated it up and warmed it up completely forgetting the fact that we just spent the last 40 minutes sitting there me talking to her with the sole intention of reducing the physical discomfort of her shoulder but ultimately it doesn't matter because the only thing that matters really in that scenario is um, the fact that her shoulder felt better and also that she had her eyes closed long enough for me to nick all the money out of her purse I'm joking I'm joking so I wouldn't do that I wouldn't I'm, I am joking that's just you can't say stuff like that during a recording uh, yeah I can I can but you know so regardless of whether or not you believe that listening to some weirdo rabbiting on blah 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 will help you is doesn't really matter because we're always changing the way we feel about things we're we're updating constantly even more now due to the internet we're getting more updated information than we ever used to get or past generations used to get it's very evident if you look back to the older generation and their the, the phrases they would use the it would almost be very stuck like this is how things are this is how you should think. This is how you should be. And as the world evolves, kind of, we realise maybe that things aren't quite that simple and that those things were not right. I mean, there used to be a thing, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. A phrase which was very much not about dogs or tricks it was pretty much saying that human beings can't learn anything new once they get to a certain age but that has been disproven physically uh, scientifically because our brains have neuroplasticity and I probably pronounced that incorrectly and I don't mind I give myself permission our brains are changing and our brains do change they're plastic not literally plastic but they can change depending on what we do or how we feed what information we feed in what activities we do so sometimes it really is as simple as listening to listening to a Jason Newland recording. I'm now talking about myself in the fifth person. And you can 
open your mind up to the possibilities of change that are always there. We're always changing. You know why that is? You know why you have the ability to change and why why you have the ability to benefit from listening to these recordings. It's simply because you are amazing. You are an amazing person with skills, with an unbelievable and powerful brain that is unlimited. It's unlimited. There's no limits that we know of. I say we. I put myself into the category of the scientists, although I didn't actually get any <laughs> qualifications at school, so I guess I'm not really a scientist. You're amazing. We're all amazing. Our bodies, and look at the healing process. Look how many things happen in our body that's just automatic. Can you imagine any other situation where you could just say, oh, I'm going to sleep now, see you in eight hours. Whether you're driving, piloting a plane, uh, using any kind of machinery, uh, doing a job, anything. You couldn't do anything and just say, oh, I think I'm going to have a, a nice eight-hour kip. It, the, you couldn't, could you? You couldn't be in charge of anything. You couldn't even be in charge of a lawnmower. You couldn't operate a lawnmower and just decide to go to sleep for eight hours while the lawnmower's running. Oh, it'll be all right on its own. No, it won't. Can you imagine that? Being on one of those big lawnmowers. Go to sleep for eight hours. You wake up. And it's basically a new track from your country all the way into the Antarctic. Which would be nice, I guess. <laughs> big, big track of... Okay, I realise it's physically impossible, but just forget that for a minute. This isn't about reality. But we do have our bodies, don't we? Oh, I'm going to go to bed now. Night, night. Everything continues to operate. Automatically. Breathing, your heart, the, all the different bits and bobs in your body, in your brain. <sighs> operate. Automatically. And you know something, regardless of how useful the recordings I do are for any particular thing, the main thing and the most important thing is they are relaxing. And learning to relax and being more relaxed in your day-to-day -day life is one of the most important things you could do. It is as important as eating. It might not seem it, but it really is. You might say, yeah, but I 
can't go without eating. Or eventually you can't go without relaxing. You need to learn. Or not even learn, just do it. It's not a learning thing. You might want to go through the, the path of learning different breathing exercises and doing yoga and spinning on your head. Spinning on your head, I don't know, that's breakdancing, isn't it? But you know, you want to do that. But Or you can just allow yourself to do what's natural. Or just to let go. Completely. Let everything drop onto the floor. Have a period of time when you don't care about anything. And that's okay. We all need that space. Where no matter what's going on in your life. You just move away from it. For a period of time. And it can feel nice. Because the more you do it. The easier it is. And then it goes from. Perhaps. You. Wanting to do it or put an attention you know actually taking the time out and intentionally trying to relax yourself or allowing yourself to feel more comfortable and over time that transforms into it becoming part of your automatic processes that occur 24 hours a day so the ability to relax deeply is always there and it automatically is Actioned, it starts when needed. Maybe it's activated before you even need it. Such as going to the dentist. Just the word dentist. It's almost, it can be surrounded by that relaxing foam. You know? Maybe you see it in your, you see the word in your mind, but it's all colourful and fluffy, like clouds, gentle, soothing. And you remember that feeling relaxed. Is something that we're born with. Being content. Falling asleep easily. We're born with these things. These are one of the few things. That we're actually instinctively able to do. Effortlessly. And I've seen a small child fall asleep whilst playing the drum. He wasn't in a band. He wasn't like in a. It wasn't at Wembley Stadium or anything. It was, but you know, you know, a little play drum that toddlers have. He fell asleep while he was doing that. Tired, so he fell asleep. Do you ever see little babies and they're being pushed along and they're basically just eyes at this point. 
tiny little body, big alien head, massive eyes. They do look like E.T. a little bit. Big, huge eyes. Or not E.T., what's the the gremlins before he turns into a gremlin? The Moggy Moo Moo, whatever it's called. Beautiful eyes. Big, massive alien eyes. And... If you look at a kid and the mother or father or whoever is looking after the child might be chatting to someone or looking at their mobile phone. Hmm. That that might happen as occasional, I guess. They might be looking at their phone. And if you look at the child, child might be, you know, six months old, a year, I don't know. It looks so peaceful. Just taking it in, looking around. Not attached to what other people are doing. Just observing. Very, very calm. Very relaxed. Because they're born with that ability. And I say they, we, we are born with the ability to relax deeply. To just sit comfortably. To have a calm, slow mind. To be able to just fall asleep naturally. So that's part of our automatic processes and I think that maybe sometimes we along the way have forgotten that or listen too much or pay too much attention to negative people or things that we see and hear instead of remembering that you're your own person You're in charge of you. You can decide how you feel when you have a dentist appointment or a doctor's appointment or job interview, anything that may be improved. by feeling more relaxed. I can't even say the word relaxed or feeling more relaxed without my body just going limp. Just hearing the words out my own mouth causes me to feel relaxed. And I'm the weirdo saying it. Relaxed. Relaxed. Mm, it feels so nice. Relaxed. So we're coming to the end of this recording. Of course, if you're listening to the longer versions, there will be background music with positive suggestions. Some counting down so that you can feel even more deeply relaxed and drift off to sleep if you choose to do so. But as we bring this part of the recording to the end, you can remember that our minds are always changing. Always changing. And it's it might surprise you just how easily 
you feel differently about certain things that we've talked about. And when you think about dentists, it can be almost a sense of not caring or not even being interested. You know, in the same way as, again, if I said to you, oh, I've got a potato, bought a potato yesterday and it looks like a big poo, go to my website and check it out. You're probably not going to want to do that because you're probably not that interested. And why would you be? I mean, I probably would be because I'm possibly a little bit weird, but it's just, oh, so what? Oh, I, I ate a yogurt yesterday. What are you telling me? I don't, what do you ate a yogurt? Oh, you can't even pretend to be interested in stuff like that, can you, really? It's, you know, I'm generally, in a general situation, oh, you know, you don't want to be sitting around in 20 years' time saying, um, oh, do you remember when you got married? Remember when you got married and, and, uh, the cake fell over. Yeah. Remember when you had that yogurt? Yeah. Like it's not going to be in that list of things to remember, is it? <laughs> so I'm going to go. And just allow those, if you choose, allow the ideas just to sink in even more. And it's possibly going to be one of those situations where you, you start thinking about it and you start to realize that something's changed. And even though you might have sat here listening for an hour to me talking possibly a lot of twaddle, you feel different, you feel different and you may not understand why, now I'm going to go and take Vinny for a walk. Vinny's my little uh, Jack Russell. He's a cute little thing. So take care. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. You are an amazing person. An amazing person. Think about all the things you've done in your life where you've helped other people. I know some, some might say, oh, I don't know if I've really helped anyone. You know, sometimes you might just open the door for somebody. You know, you, know, you might be in a petrol station. You, you hold the door open for them. Or you let them go first in the queue. Or you might smile at them or let them, you know, pat your dog or anything like that. That might be the difference that makes a difference for their life in that moment. They might be at the lowest ebb that they've been. And to have that tiny little bit of human kindness may be the difference that allows them to move forward. So anyone that thinks that they've not made a difference to another person's life 
and have not helped anyone. It's not true. We've all helped other people. All of us. So you are an amazing person and you do deserve to be happy. I'm not just saying this for the sake of it. Besides, you've already listened to the recording. You know, if I'm going to start paying you compliments, I'd do that at the beginning. You're amazing, baby. Please listen further. No. The fact is, you do deserve to be happy. Not an opinion, it's a fact. So, take care. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. And now, I'm going. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.